Uh, hello YouTube, back once again with my film reviews, and tonight I saw the new Disney movie Tomorrowland, and... Oh boy, let's talk about this one, do I have a lot to say about this. Um, well, the premise of this film is, is, it's about a, uh, it's about a girl named, uh, Casey Newton, Jesus, what kind of name is that, who, um, she finds, she gets a pin that shows her, uh, an alternate world called Tomorrowland that's basically this super scientifically advanced, like, super creative world, and she hears that, like, the world's in peril and only she can save it, and just stuff happens, and... God, let's talk about this one. Okay, uh, let's start off with the gun in this film. First, let me say this. This was the single-handed most ambitious movie I've seen this year yet. And hands down, I've not seen a more ambitious film than this this year. The vis Everything from the visuals. The visuals were just beautiful in this film. And I love the visuals they went for. They didn't try to make it look real. It kind of looked like it was a cartoon. Like, you were looking into someone's fantasy about what the future could be. Like, it just, it looked like someone, someone's dream of what, what could be made and what could be done. So the visuals were beautiful, were just wonderful. The world, this was such an interesting world, Tomorrowland. That was wonderful. The message, this message is a really creative, really interesting one. Like, I'll say what it is later, uh, but I'll get into that later. But, like, it's a really interesting message for kids. That and the creativity of this film is just un unimaginable. Just all these different things, like, from, like, people's weaponry to the, uh, some of the machines that are around to just the design of Tomorrowland. Just this beautiful, like, neo-world. Like, there's, like, this, like, fantastic, like, all these fantastic little things, like, there's, like, a moment, like, like, when you just see, like, all these pools, and, like, there's this new version of swimming, like, like, like you, the pools are basically, basically hovering in air, you can, like, jump out of one land, fall into the next, and just so interesting, and, um, my god, the first scene, the, 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 the scene when she first touches the, when she holds the butt in, and she sees, like, the entire world, and you just see this, it is such a, wonderful scene, it's so beautiful, there is so much awe just as she walks through this world, though it's so beautiful, it's so creative, there's just, it just gives you just like this wonderful like dreamlike quality, that scene alone, just the world, the beauty, that could have been a short film on its own and that would, it would have been an A+, if this, this could have just been the short movie, that one scene could have just been a short movie of just this random girl, you don't know her name, she touches the button she goes through this tour of Tomorrowland that's a short film this would be amazing because that scene was uh, hands down for me the highlight of this film was just a beautiful wondrous thing that just made your imagination run wild about the future and that's what this film's clearly gunning for so right now let me say that single-handed most ambitious movie I ever saw and it did uh, get me like just like just the imagination off the charts um so that, that's the first good thing I gotta say. Uh, another good thing is, uh, George Clooney. George Clooney was very likable and, uh, as, like, the supporting main, the main supporting character, I would say. He's George Clooney, just very likable, always nice to see him. He, he was very nice and charming through and through, as George Clooney usually is. That, that, and he, I know this, there's this gonna be a lot, there's already, I've already heard a lot of controversy about this, about a relationship he has with one of the characters. I'll say, I'll give it a pass, because I actually thought it was somewhat touching the relationship, and, like, the last conversation they had between each other was actually quite nice and touching, so, I'll say, uh, because it, it, I know it's really un awkward and kind of weird just when you just see it, like, on screen, but I'll give it a pass, because I'll just do it, because... I, I'm gonna get a pass, because I did think it was a nice touching moment, just, like, just, just seeing that, um, that, uh, the other, another actress that, another character that really, I thought was really great was, uh, Raffi Cassidy, I think that's how you say the actress's name, uh, never seen her in anything before this, she plays the, she plays, like, the, like, uh, like, nine, ten-year-old robot girl, um, uh, robot girl, I thought she was really, I thought she was, one, she was really great for a kid actress, uh, like, uh, at first when I saw her, I thought she was gonna be really annoying when I saw her outfit, like, in the fact that her name's Athena, I was like, oh god, she's gonna suck, isn't she, um, no, I actually thought she was really good, um, 
The only thing at the time I thought she was annoying wasn't her first scene. I was like, okay, you're being kind of annoying right now, kid. Can you please go away? But no, after that, she was definitely really likable. I, I always like how I like how she kept sp- switching between being really creepy and very enjoyably kind of quirky and weird. Like there's like just these scenes like when she'll just start bugging out and just her eyes will start twitching and she'll like be cutting into like herself, just like just stabbing herself with needles. And that's like she'll be like really creepy, and then they'll just be funny scenes, just like was just punch. She's like, oh, that hurt, like. That made me, she was a very like she was very good for child actors. I thought she was good. And finally, let's talk about the last lead of this movie, uh, the main character, uh, Britt Robertson. I think you say her name as the character Cassidy Newton. Okay, um, she, well, one, let me say she was very likable. She was the actress. Actress was very charming through and through. And uh, I'll also say this: this actress, she gives it her all. I think this was like her first major film, and I am glad people are already saying I she's probably gonna become the next like big actress from her generation because she was she did give it her all like she, she could always tell she was never at one moment phoning it in she was always very charming very likable but the, let's go that goes into my first issue of this film was she was not written as a human this character this she did not have human reactions to all the shit that goes down and around her like there's like there's like scene there's like this scene movie it, it like, cause like, there's like a moment like she goes up in a rocket ship that comes out of no, like she ends up in a rocket ship. She just blows up and she's just like laughing it with joy. Like, no, that's not a human reaction. Like this character is supposed to be like 16 or 17. She is way too quirky, way too upbeat. She does not feel like a human being. And that is the one that is a major flaw for this, for this to work. She needed to come off as human and she didn't. She came off like this idealist, just uh, like a non-existent kind of character, and I, it's a shame because Brad Bird has running good teenagers. I remember, like, I thought Violet was really likable in The Incredibles. Like, I thought she liked it a good. They, she was a fun teenage character, and, but uh, this character, she does not come off like a like a teenager. She just, she just comes off as like pi- kind of like a the, the pixie perfect quirky whatnot character and that's the major that is one of the major most major issues of this film this film was too quirky this film needed to be more serious this film needed a serious tone like this should have been a movie with just mostly mostly just characters sitting around and just talking to each each other just talking about this idea it's like of the future like why why should we why we should try for a better future that needed to be said like that neat that is what the problem with the movie it was just so quirky like and it's a shame because brad bird like even though like his other movies have like quirky moments they also have some very serious moments like like the incredibles like the main character mr incredible he was essentially a man going through a midlife crisis and was somewhat depressed with where his life was like well and like it, it and and but this film like no like i said like the main character is always just upbeat and smiling through and through like always be like yay this is so beautiful what's such a wonderful adventure this need there's like only like there's like only like one scene i think like when she basically just sits down and just like starts like almost crying about she wanted, about knowing like what like could happen like there needs to be more scenes of these characters just sitting down and talking to one another Th- this movie needed to treat kids more like adults than this did. Like, because Dizzy has done it. Like, uh, let me think a few. Um, well, like, The Incredibles. Like, like I said, the main character is, like, basically a manic depressant. This film, you th- what this relationship need? It needed something like Up. Like, Up. Like, because Up is a quirky, it has, is a kid's movie. It has quirky moments in it. But there is so many scenes of these peep two characters just sitting down and just talking to each other. Just having a conversation with each other. Coming off as human beings as they just say what, how they're feeling to one another. And that is the issue with this movie. There's not enough of of that this neat this felt like there's just too many scenes of just them just trying to pander to the kids audience this film's like up oh, they do not pander to the kid audience they treated kids like adults with the that movie just dealing with such hard ideas as death and just like moving on and like remorse and like without and like without like being like uh, up be like there's scenes in this movie when people are being killed like just straight killed obliterated innocent civilian just being killed left just being killed right in front of you and just no no there's like quirky music playing it's just like it's supposed to be super fun and adventurous like this film to work it needed that dark 
tone to it from beginning to end. Because then this could have been something special, but that is another issue. That and that leads me into another major issue. This had real. This film had really, really bad pacing issues from beginning to end. Just even from the opening, like the opening has like this quirky scene, like when George Clooney is like explaining the ideas essentially of the film. And you hear, like, the main character, and you also hear Britt Robertson in the back just, like, saying, like, stopping him. And, like, the way the film works, like, you see the tall screen, it cuts to George Clooney doing this, and then you cut to a very long extended flashback of George Clooney, like, basically when he was a kid, how he first got to Tomorrowland. And my only thought was, and then and then it just cuts to, like, the the, the, the main character, Britt Robertson, uh, 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 Casey, like, as, like, as a child, and, like, and, like her dream dreams of like going like seeing of a better future and um and then it cuts to her as a teenager my only thought was you want to make it better cut that goddamn quirky moment in the beginning with like with like with kate with um uh brett robertson stopping george clooney have that opening prologue scene with george clooney um just like when he first gets to Tomorrowland, have the title screen because like the last line in like in the George Clooney prologue scene is the kid version talking to uh the robot, the um the robot um um Athena and uh just saying and she's and he's just like what is this place? And it's like it's and I was like why didn't you just put then the title the title screen Tomorrowland cut to the beginning with K uh the main character, Casey, that would have made it this very flowing. The way it flows now, it feels so jarring and so disjointed, disjointed. It feels like this movie has two beginnings, and that's an issue. That is a really bad pacing issue. Not just that, the climax of this movie, my god, the goddamn climax, it comes out of nowhere. It, it, it just happens. I was like, when it started, I was literally just like, wait, is this the climax? Like, where was the build-up? Where was the start of the climax? Where was the evidence that we were going into the climax? It's not there. It just starts. It just begins out of nowhere. Just nowhere. The climax begins. I'm just like, this is the climax? What? Like, where's the... What? And not just that. For a movie called Tomorrowland... You know how long they spend in Tomorrowland? The title area? 30 minutes at most. For any two hour movie. They spend maybe a thrilling 30 minutes in Tomorrowland. And 20 of those minutes are not the awe aspiring moments of like, um, like those, so that like, ten, that, those like, that like, seven minute sequence of like the main character, um, um, Kate, uh, Casey, uh, just, like, walking through, like, a Tomorrowland. No, it, you just see this just shamble place. You just go into this one room. That's it. You're barely in Tomorrowland, and this movie is called Tomorrowland. Why? It was such a wonderfully interesting place. Spend more time in it. You create this beautiful world. Why are you limiting the viewing, viewing of it so much? Just why? Why? Okay, moving on. I know I'm being really emotional about this, but I just love Brad Bird so much. I love The Incredibles, Ratatouille, The Iron Giant, all masterpieces. I'm just trying to think what went wrong here, Brad Bird. Um, so there was that. Oh, and because of the bad hazing issues, Hugh Laurie. I love Hugh Laurie. He was wonderful as Dr. House. I love him anytime I see him anything else in this. He is, he's not good in this movie, but it's not his fault. He is essentially the villain of this film. He's in for maybe all of 20 minutes. All of 20. He shows up. The climax begins. He dies. It ends. He's in for like 20 minutes. And I'm just like, what? Why? Where was the built-up? Where was the character? What, what, where did you establish him as a threatening villain? Nowhere. Nowhere. Just nowhere. He just shows up. He just becomes the film's villain for because so they could have their climax. And he dies. No character no character arc. No dramatic build-up to him. No deep three three dimensional complex uh, thoughts to him. No, just shows up, says I'm the villain. Climax. Then he dies. Jesus. 
So that, and finally, I'm going to start coming down now and get to the final thoughts. The pl there were a few, and there were, there were two plot issues, really big plot issues out of this film. One, this was actually one of the more minor ones. One, well, my only thought is like a uh, the character Athena like gives the main character Casey like the pin and the that lets her see Tomorrowland in the opening, and the pin makes like basically the evil robot start targeting Casey, and but like Casey is hidden the road like trying to find answers, and the Athena comes looking for her, and my only thought like if. You knew that pin was going to make evil robots going to come after her and you're going to try to protect Casey. Why don't you just be like, oh, here's this pin. Touch it. Oh, that's Tomorrowland. Okay, now you're going to have to stick with me because you're in danger now. But no. No, it makes no sense. Uh, that and the, the stakes of this movie, I do not understand the stakes of this film. Because essentially, you learn in the end they're, start, they're trying to stop the apocalypse. Basically, every form of the apocalypse you can imagine, like... The nuclear holocaust, global warming, flooding the earth. All that's going to happen like 50 days you learn or, or so in the film. And my only thought is, and they stop it in the end, and my only thought was, how? I can somewhat understand the nuclear apocalypse, but how in 50 days did you save the world from like, what was essentially the day after tomorrow happening? Like the polarized stamps melting, the world being flooded. I'm like, how did you stop that in 50 days? How? Just how? I don't know. I really don't know. But I will say this. Even though that did not make sense, I did mess, mess, mention this before, the message of this film was actually a very interesting message in which, because this is interesting, because we this is going on in schools a lot, in which so we, we mainly talk about in schools is how the future, how this world is essentially going to hell. Like, Earth is going to hell to a certain degree. Like, and like, and, and, like, even though, like, uh, I'm sure they people, like, talk about this hope and hoping and sparring it will make people change it, it can also have the reverse effect of people just making people just think, well, if it's going to hell, why should I work on it if it's just going to go straight to hell in the end? And I think that was an interesting message of them saying, like, maybe we shouldn't just say it's going to hell, maybe we should just sit, talk about the hope for a better tomorrow. And I thought that was actually a really interesting message. Oh, and finally, on a quick side note... Um, the quick side note I thought was kind of funny that the entrance to Tomorrowland, an entire new dimension, was under the It's a Small World ride. That made, that just, uh, the idea of that just made me laugh. It did. So guys, probably watching my review, you probably think I hate this movie. I do not hate this film. It, like I said, there was a lot of ambition. I really liked the character. I thought, I really liked the actor, the main actors, and, um... And, uh, but as a final, ra uh, final rating, I'm going to give this film a two and a half out of five. This movie is okay. It's a mediocre film. Um, this is kind of weird, because usually when I, it's a mediocre film, I'm just like, okay, well, now it's a big pile of nothing of a film. That's my, that's usually how a film makes me say it's mediocre. This film, though, it was so ambitious, I would not recommend watching it. I could not recommend this to another person, but there's... No part of me that says like, oh, I regret watching that film. Like, why I why kill? Why did I waste my life watching that? So take that what's for take that for what it's worth. YouTube, as always, please subscribe, and I will see you next time. Okay, bye.